Hey, what's up? This is DGJ with another video reminding you to like, subscribe, and shop on my store. Today, we will be going over 10 things you can do to be a good neighbor in Japan. It is important to be a good neighbor in your host country to set up positive view for foreigners in Japan. What might seem odd or tedious to you might be someone else's culture. There are a few of these that no one will actually sit down and teach you, but if you don't know them, they will cause some serious problems with your Japanese neighbors, to the point where they may call your housing agency if you're renting to complain about you, who will in turn contact the owner of your rental and give you unnecessary stress. Womp womp. So check it out. At number 10, saying good morning sometimes. You want to seem approachable because you will see your neighbors every day for X amount of years. An Ohio in the daytime, Konnichiwa in the afternoon, and a Kambawa at night wouldn't kill you and it goes a long way in portraying you as a good, decent person and approachable. Do you have to say hi to everyone every day? No, of course not. But when you can muster up one, go for it because they do talk and they will talk about you for sure. That's a DT guarantee. Number nine, if you're not sharing your barbecue, you could be reported. No, I'm joking, of course. But I am serious about this part. <laughs> if you are barbecuing, you need to get a smoke screen put up. Anything that will deflect all the smoke coming out of your grill or smoker uh, going into other people's open windows. Yeah, it probably does smell good. But if they aren't getting any, they're going to be super pissed because they have to smell the smoke and get nothing in return. These screens are actually more like cloth and you might see them hanging down below the balcony of a house and tied off somewhere. That helps keep the smoke out of your neighbor's house. More than likely you won't get in trouble, but you'll want to make some type of attempt to be a good neighbor. Number eight, if you have a dog and he or she is a non-stop barking dog whenever you you leave them outside unattended, then you should bring that dog inside. Leaving dogs outside will surely piss them off. I'm not talking about 10 minutes left unattended. I mean, you're going out to eat and you leave Fido in the yard for over an hour while they bark and howl at the moon. Oh! Waiting for you to return. It's enough to make people go crazy. Your intention may be good, but that won't come through to your neighbors. And in some cases, they'll even look at it as neglect. Better to bring them inside and just take them for a walk later. Number seven, if you own a car and it's not parked in your parking spot for the majority of the day, you are in the wrong. Yes, you can pull it out for an hour or so to clean it, but it shouldn't be sitting out in the street impeding traffic or making it hard for people to get out of their parking spots. This is a big no-no and will get you reported. If you have company over and they have a car and spending the night, don't have their car out there in the way. It's better you just find a nearby coin parking spot and just pay rather than have someone call the cops or your housing agency on you. That will only piss you off and raise your guard and lower your trust amongst your neighbors. Number six, keep your music down. This is hard to do if you love your sound bars and your sound systems like me. I used to have a Bose lifestyle system for like 13 years before I got rid of it, but even I knew it was too loud at times. The bass from the subwoofer is what they'll really hear and feel. Use good judgment when blasting your music or movies in an apartment because you have neighbors above you, below you, and on both sides, so you really don't have a lot of leeway with that. Just know they will call and complain. <laughs> Number 5. Smoking this really pisses people off because it's legal to smoke, but neighbors really can't get you in trouble for it, but they also don't want to endure it, so that might come back at you in other undesirable ways. I am not a smoker for one, but I know of people getting hate letters taped to their doors, uh, slid under their doors, etc. With the new tech out there, it's better to stay away from the traditional cigarettes because unlike noise from your TV, smoke can seep through almost anywhere even outside of your house. I mean, people can smell your smoke just walking by an open window of your house, depending on how much you smoke, right? Again, you don't know your neighbors like you think you do, and you don't want anyone to snap on you, so just take it into consideration. Me personally, I don't want my house and agency calling me every month with something. I'd rather not see them at all and just send them my rent money without delivering me bad, irritating news all the time. But that's just me though, you might be different. Number four, pick up after your dog. I will tell you flat out, if you're walking your dog and you do not have a doggy bag, i.e. a tiny tote 
bag consisting of a water bottle to wash away the urine and bags to pick up their poop, you, sir, madam, are in the wrong automatically. And trust me, when I tell you they are watching, <laughs> have that bag <laughs> swinging free and true from one hand and the leash in the other so that everyone can see it. Pick that poop up and take it with you. And another thing I can't stand. Neighbors, trees, or bushes do not qualify as toilets for your dog. I see it time and time again. People letting their dog pee on other people's bushes and then squirting water on it like that will make it better. It won't, okay? <laughs> that doesn't fix the problem. I mean, dog urine is ripe with ammonia and will kill plants. Not to mention, attract more dogs, right? And also, if you are letting them relieve themselves in your backyard, which is perfectly normal, you must pick up all that poop at least a couple times a week because your backyard might be right outside someone else's bedroom and they can smell it and they will call the agency on you so quick you wouldn't even be ready number three watch your speed well first off you should be following the speed limit posted on the street right chances are you live in an area with small children and parents take it very seriously when you are speeding to your house even when their kids are tucked away in their beds or playing their video games inside i mean not even outside that would still put parents on the edge i know because i am one of them doing this in japan will not only get you reported to your housing agent but the police yes if the police know you are constantly doing it because they are getting reports they will have a guy on a bike sitting there waiting for you one day and you will have another situation to deal with that you don't want number two you probably didn't see this one coming but it is a legit one and that's the aisatsu or greeting boy 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 don't you ever ever never come to a japanese neighborhood and not introduce yourself to your immediate neighbors you have to say hi to the neighbor to your left you have to say hi to the neighbor on your right and behind you and definitely across from you it's not mandatory that you bring snacks when you read them but they do help <laughs> Remember, this is your first interaction with your neighbors and can buy you some immediate respect and or tolerance points. Of course you can and may squander some, if not all these points in the future, but to start off with none is a huge no-no. Number one, and yes, it made it to the top of the list because this one's gonna get you more immediate problems with your neighbors than smoking, noise, dogs, or anything else we listed. And that is not sticking to your assigned trash cage and or not setting up the trash cage or cleaning it when it's your turn and this one really applies to those renting a home in japan when you move in you'll notice multiple trash cages in your immediate area you can't just drop yours in any old trash cage nah you have to use your assigned trash cage i know it sounds silly you're thinking dt police man it's just trash it's all going to the same spot no big deal right wrong well Japanese get very upset when you're not putting your trash in your assigned trash cage. Something that seems so insignificant to you is a big deal here. Remember what I said before? I know this because I've lived it. So I used to live in a house where there was a trash cage 50 meters from my house. But guess what? The trash cage assigned to my house was around the corner up a hill over 100 meters away. So of course I'm dumping it at the closest one. <laughs> That's a no brainer. And that's when all the problems started for me. Let me tell you, random calls from the real estate agent, random letters on my door, hate stares, more. Luckily, I moved out of the area to the area I'm at now. It's really not worth it. It's best to just stick to your cage. Setting up and cleaning the trash cage. Let me explain. So there are basically two types of neighborhoods, right? There are neighborhoods where residents set up the trash cage and neighborhoods where private companies set up the trash cage and clean the trash cage for the former you're usually not paying a community fee and so cleanliness of the area is solely on the residents if you are paying a community fee it can be around 4,000 yen to 6,000 yen a month per household this is to pay a private company to come out and sweep the streets uh, set up the trash cages and to maintain upkeep on the neighborhood and neighborhood park so if you live in a community where the residents are responsible for cleaning the streets, crows get in the trash and there's trash all over the street, and guess what? You got to get down and dirty and clean up everyone else's trash. Best to just do it when it's your time or live in an area where it's done for you. It's only a home rental homeowner 
scenario. And that's it. Those are the things to look out for when living in Japanese neighborhoods. And that's how you get along. That's how you stay off the radar and live a peaceful life in Japan without too much drama. Sure, you will have issues, but if, you, if you're taking in what I just told you and you just learned today, you won't have any of these problems. I'm DTJ. Like, subscribe, and shop. See you on the next one. DT out.